Okay, let's talk about how to graph the parabola. So what is a parabola? Well, basically a parabola is the shape of the graph of a quadratic equation. So what we're looking at right here is a quadratic equation and the graph of any quadratic equation is something called a parabola. And uh, basically a parabola has a U shaped uh, to it. So it can look something like this or it can look something like this. There's all sorts of variations to it, but effectively a U-shaped graph is something called a parabola. And what we wanna do in this particular video is show you exactly how to graph a parabola when you are given a quadratic equation. This is absolutely critical knowledge for those of you who are taking any sort of algebra course. So I'm gonna go through this step by step. Again, this is essential um, uh, skill uh, for any of you out there taking a course like say Algebra 1, definitely Algebra 2, College Algebra, etc. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I'm telling you right now, if you think you are a bad math student, that is not true. There is no such thing as a bad math student. Okay, Everyone could be relatively successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, you got to be willing to work hard at learning math. Okay, So if you're not doing the homework, you're not taking notes, well, you got to start there. But if you're willing to put in the work, the second thing you need is great math instruction, clear and understandable. That's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. I want to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it can help you out tremendously. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a math section, things like uh, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplace or teacher certification exam. I have a uh, large amount of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, absolutely check out my middle and high school homeschool math courses. And uh, if this video helps you out, consider helping me out by liking it and subscribing to my channel. Okay, so let's get into how to graph the, uh, a parabola, or we can state this question in, in terms of uh, graph the quadratic equation. Either way, the shape of this graph is something called the parabola, uh, a parabola. Now, if you think you know how to do this, go ahead and maybe pause the video. This will probably take you about another, uh, maybe like a minute or two uh, to do this. So put your um, answers into the comment section. Uh, uh, do you know how to do this? Do you know the steps? Do you understand the steps? Uh, but anyways, if you don't, I'm going to explain this right now. Okay, so let's first of all talk about a few things um, when it comes to parabolas, okay? So again, I said that uh, you can have a parabola that looks like this, okay? I'm going to call this a happy-looking parabola, and I'll tell you the reason why here in a second. Or you can have something like this, and you can have all sorts of variations to this. You can have a skinny-looking parabola. You can have a wide-looking parabola. Again, uh, when we're talking about a U-shaped um, uh, figure, it could look, it could be any of these uh, variations of these U-shaped graphs. Now, the first thing I want you to notice here in this particular quadratic equation is the sign of the leading coefficient. In other words, notice here that I have this um, quadratic equation written uh, from highest to lowest power. In other words, it's x squared, x, and then the number, okay? Now, what is the sign of the um, leading coefficient, the, at the thing that's in front of the x squared? Well, if we don't see a negative, that means it's positive. So this is positive, okay? And I want you to remember that when the leading coefficient, the sign of the thing that's in front of the x squared is positive, you have a positive parabola, something like this. You can see the little smiley face here. This guy right here is happy to be a parabola now, likewise, if you have a negative sign in front of that uh, uh, x squared term, okay, the leading coefficient's negative, then you have a parabola is just not happy with its life being a parabola, so it is a sad parabola, okay? So if it's negative, it's going to be down, okay, you got a sad parabola. If it's positive, it's going to be a happy parabola. Uh, so that's the first thing I want you to observe when we're talking about the graphs of quadratic equations, okay? So there's a lot of different things here I'm gonna kind of get to here in a second. Now, let's kind of notice uh, some other things about parabolas is that there is kind of a peak, okay? So here, there's like a top of the parabola right there, okay? And that point that it kind of peaks out 
is something called the vertex, all right? Now, this particular vertex is like the maximum point of the parabola. So we can kind of say this is the maximum. But over here, it's like the minimum. But either way, you kind of think of it as where it kind of does its U-turn right there. This uh, specific point is something called the vertex. Now, the vertex is a specific XY point. Okay, it's a point that we're actually going to be finding here in a second. So uh, this is something that you um, uh, just kind of need to conceptually understand. Now, another thing about parabolas is that they're symmetric. So let me just kind of draw a little line here. We'll focus in on this uh, parabola right here. In other words, the left-hand side of the parabola is like a mirror image of the right-hand side. Now, I know my sketch here isn't perfect, but you get the idea. So the parabolas are uh, symmetric. And the axis of symmetry, okay, there's a line here uh, that kind of splits this parabola in two, is going to be um, x equals whatever this value is here for the vertex, okay? So this particular number. Now, we can even um, do more in terms of uh, finding information about uh, parabolas. Let me show you a couple uh, different additional things here. So let's say I have this parabola, and it kind of looks, eh, let me do it a little bit better than that, uh, something like this. Okay, so here is our parabola. Now, again, remember, this parabola um, is a reflection it's the shape of a specific quadratic equation, okay? Now, there's some other critical points here. One, we already talked about that this point right here, we call this the vertex. But there's other, there others, there's other information, excuse me, I'm kind of stumbling on my words here, that we can um, uh, look at when we're investigating a quadratic equation. So these points right here would be the what, okay? Well, if this, quadra uh, if this quadratic equation or this parabola is crossing through the x-axis. These right here are something called the solutions. These are the real roots. Okay. In other words, if I was to take this, let's say, for example, this quadratic equation and set it equal to zero and solve for x, I'm going to get two solutions. And in this particular case, there's two real number solutions. So you could plot those points right there. That's where our parabola would go through in terms of the x-axis. But sometimes, a parabola will not go through the x-axis, like in this case right here. So what type of solutions does this uh, quadratic equation have, or this parabola? This would be complex or imaginary solutions. There's no real solutions because it's not crossing through the x-axis. Now, you know, these are all associated things that you need to understand about quadratic equations because it all ties in when you are looking at the graph of a particular function, in this case, the graph of a quadratic function, which is a parabola. Now, another point that you're going to be interested in is the y-intercept. So notice that this graph crosses through the y-axis right at this particular point right there. So this point is a point that we can find, and notice what the value of x, this is an x-y point uh, again. Okay, so here's an x-y point, this specific point, the y-intercept, uh, is a point that we're actually going to find. But this graph crosses through the y-axis when x is equal to 0. Okay, so right here, notice our x value is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. Right here at 0 is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis, um, called the y-intercept. So you might be thinking to yourself, man, this guy's telling me a lot about parabolas. He's giving me all this information. Just tell me how to graph this thing. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not that simple, okay? We need to know a lot about quadratic equations and uh, because the graph of a quadratic equation, i.e. parabola, you can uh, look and you can gain information by it. And all these other concepts I'm talking about is related things you need to understand about quadratic equations. Okay, so hopefully you got a good sense of the big picture here. And with that being said, we're going to get into the exact steps to produce the graph of a quadratic equation, i.e. the graph of the, uh, the parabola. We're gonna go ahead and do that now. So let me show you the steps that we're going to take. All right, so first, here is the problem that we're gonna focus on. I'll explain this here in a second. But the first uh, step in graphing the parabola is we wanna find the vertex. Okay, I already explained to you what that is. Again, that's this point, this little, uh, uh, minimum value or the maximum value. So there's the vertex. So we have to find that specific x, y point. 
And generally speaking, this requires the most work. Okay, it's not that difficult, but I am going to give you some formulas that you're going to need to remember. The second thing is we need to determine, is it a, a happy parabola or sad parabola? Okay, I already talked about how we determine that. Okay, whether this is where it's positive, this is where it's negative. Okay, that's really easy. And then the third thing we need to do is find the y-intercept. Okay, so that's this point right here. Okay, we're going to find that y-intercept. That's not that hard to find. Now, a couple of additional things. You could, if um, you decided to do so, or if your teacher asked you to do so, you could solve your quadratic equation, set that thing equal to zero, and find any real number solutions, and these would be the x-intercepts. So that is, those are additional points that you could find. It's not, you don't necessarily need them, but you definitely need the vertex and the y-intercept you can always get as well. And then of course, when you sketch this thing, just make sure your sketch is symmetrical. Okay, I'll, I'll give you some additional guidance on how to make your uh, graph uh, more accurate. But this is gonna be the kind of the main steps. All right, so now let's kind of get over to what I got right here. And I have y equals x squared plus two x plus one. This is the problem we're gonna be doing. You always want to write your um, quadratic equation in standard form. So if it's not given to you in standard form, rewrite it such that it's from highest to lowest power. Now, when you do that, we want to notice that the, the coefficient, the number in front of the x squared, we're going to call a. The number in front of the x, we're going to call b. And then this number by itself is referred to as c. We actually don't need that, but... Uh, this is important, this ax squared plus bx plus c. You'll see this when you're using the quadratic formula, which you may need to use to find these real number roots. So again, I'm talking quadratic equations, quadratic functions. So you're like, yeah, I don't really care about that. I don't really need to know that. Yes, you need to know everything I'm talking about. But uh, anyways, ax squared plus bx plus c, you'll see how this comes into play uh, in a second. So let's go ahead and start with our first step, finding the vertex of this quadratic uh, equation. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, again, we make sure that our equation is in uh, standard form, highest to lowest power. So this number is going to be our A, this number is going to be our B, this number is our C. We don't really need it, but I'm just going to list it there anyways. So you can see here, A is what? Well, A is 1. There's no number in front of this x squared. You're like, well, there, I don't see a number. Well, there's always a 1 right there. We don't typically write it there. But uh, if you don't see anything, it's just implied that there is a 1. Okay, so A is 1. Okay, so what is B? Well, B right there is equal to 2. And then C is, uh, is equal to 1 as well. But we don't need it to find the vertex. We'll just kind of get rid of that there for a second. We need the A and B. So remember, the vertex is a specific point, okay? It's a, a, a particular point right like right there, for example. It's an xy ordered pair, okay? So what we need to do is find the x and the y, okay? So how do we find uh, the vertex? Well, you start off by finding the x uh, coordinate of this particular point. And the way you find that is by using this little formula right there minus b over 2a. So what's the b and the a? Well, this is the b and this is the a. We're simply going to plug in the a and the b into this little formula, and that will give this give us the x value, and then we'll go ahead and talk about getting the y value here in a second. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here's our a, here's our b, here is the formula to find the x value of the vertex. So x is equal to minus b over 2a. Let's direct our attention right here. So let's just go ahead and simply plug in minus b. Okay, well b is equal to 2, so we'll plug in 2. Remember, we're using this formula right here, minus b. b is 2, so that's going to be minus a 2 over 2 times a. a is 1, so that's going to be 2 times 1. Okay, so you can see the setup right here. And now we just go ahead and do the number crunching. So minus 2 is going to be negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is 2. So negative 2 divided by positive 2 is negative 1. There you go. Uh, so for our x value, for our point, uh, our x is negative 1. Now we simply have to find the y value. Okay, And that's where this is going to come into play right here. Okay. All right. So if you want to take notes on this, I definitely encourage you to do so. A couple things here. If you need uh, more help, if you're like already overwhelmed, I teach this super thoroughly in any one of my algebra courses. Um, 
uh, from Algebra 1 and beyond. I also offer uh, Algebra Notes uh, in the description of this video that has all this uh, stuff kind of written out as a reference for you so you don't have to take notes if you don't want to take notes in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and now find that y uh, component uh, to this point. So we already know that x is negative 1. Okay, so let's just remember x we just found. It's negative 1 right there. So we just found that. Now we need to find y. Okay, so remember x was minus b over 2a, and once we have that value, we need to find the y uh, coordinate by plugging in that value into the equation, into the function, right? So we need to find y now. So what does that mean? What does this crazy notation mean? Well, it's not that difficult. Let me show you exactly what it means. So here's our, our quadratic equation, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, remember, in mathematics, when you have this uh, y, equals something like this, okay, y equals, this y you could replace with f of x, right? This is a quadratic equation, okay, we would refer to this as a quadratic equation. Uh, this right here we refer to as a quadratic function. They're basically the same thing, but I just want you to know, look at y and look at f of x, they're in the same position, so we can write this, we can uh, think of this as y equals this or f of x is equal to this. And the reason why I state that is because the formula, okay, this right here, is using function notation, okay? So basically what it's saying is once you get your answer, you're going to plug it into this function, okay? And all that means is that, remember, our answer here was, let's go back and review, we got a negative 1 for x, okay? In simple terms, what this means is, you're going to plug in negative 1 everywhere you see an x. Okay, you're just going to, our answer, again, was x is equal to negative 1. So to get the y, we simply just plug in uh, negative 1 where x is at and then just do the number crunching. So uh, really it's f of negative 1. That's where this notation uh, comes in, f of your answer, okay, in, uh, minus b over 2a. And the reason it's written this way is because that's the way you're going to see this in your textbook, okay? You're going to you'd see this notation, so you've got to understand it as such. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. So f of negative 1, i.e., we're just going to replace the x with negative 1. That's what we got when we did our minus b over 2a. So negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. We replace these x's with negative 1. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Plus 1 is 1. So 1 plus 1 is positive 2. Minus 2 is 0. So y is equal to 0. That means the vertex is negative 1, 0. Okay, again, this was our x, and this was our y. We just go ahead and we just uh, found that y is equal to 0. So now we got our vertex. So that's a lot of work, and that really is the most work when we are, uh, uh, generally speaking, when you're determining uh, the graph of a quadratic equation outside of possibly having to solve a quadratic equation to find those x-intercepts if there's any real number roots. So the, we get, went ahead and did uh, the first step. We found the vertex. We have negative 1, 0, so yay, we are happy with that. Now the second step is, hey, is this a happy or sad parabola? So looking at this, is that positive or negative? Well, we don't see a negative sign, so it must be positive. So that uh, quadratic equation is very happy to be a parabola, i.e. the parabola, when we graph that, is going to look something like that, okay? It's going to be happy. It's not going to be an upside-down uh, U, okay? It's going to be a regular-looking U like that. So we're kind of just gaining uh, clues here. And that leads us to our uh, last step is finding that y-intercept. So again, remember, the y-intercept is the location where that parabola is going to cross through the y-axis. This is actually very easy to do, and let's do that now. Okay, so to find the y-intercept, all you need to do is let x equal to 0. Okay, it's very important you understand this. So if you look at this point right there, here's the x-axis. So let's say this was 5, this is 3, that's 2, that's 1. Well, this point right here, that's x is 0, okay? But when x is 0, that's the point uh, right here where the graph is going through the y-axis. So the y-intercept can be found was when x is 0, and then we just plug in 0 for x, and then we'll see what that tells us. That's how we get the y-intercept of any function. 
So here's our equation y equals x squared plus 2x. Let's go ahead and let x equal to 0. We'll plug in the axis for 0, so that's going to be 0 squared, which is 0 plus 2 times 0 is 0. All this is one big 0, so we're left with 1. So the y-intercept is 1. Okay, so that is the point 0, 1. Okay, so now what do we got here? Okay, well, we got the vertex. We know that it's a happy parabola, and we have the y-intercept. Let's go ahead and put it all together. All right, let me go ahead and show you my graph, and here you go. So here's the vertex, negative 1, 0. All right, so we're, uh, let's recall, there it is right there, negative 1, 0. So let's just plot that point. Uh, so negative 1 on the x-axis, 0 on the y-axis. Now, we know that this is going to be a happy parabola, but let's go ahead and plot the y-intercept. That's 0, positive 1. So this is all making sense here. So 0, positive 1. Now, I know that this is going to be a happy parabola. We already determined that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sketch my parabola where it's going through the y-intercept and it's bouncing off this vertex, okay? And I'm doing it in such a way where I'm thinking, all right, I want to make this symmetric, okay? In other words, I'm trying to get the, my little sketch to be a mirror image, this side to be, you know, equal to that side. Now, so let's talk about some other things here to make our graph more accurate. But by the way, if this is what, you know, if you already know how to do this and you could do everything up to this point, that's excellent. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and give you a happy face and A+. Plus. I just love to do this as a teacher. 100%, I'll give you a few stars for being so awesome at math, okay? But you can make your graph a lot more accurate here. Now, how could we do that? Well, the best way to do that is just to construct a table of value, x, y points, and just... Uh, uh, basically select some points, let's say right here, maybe negative 2, maybe negative 4, here's 0, maybe we can do 1, maybe we can do 2. So let's say uh, x is 1, 2, negative 2, negative 4, and we could plug in these respective values into this, uh, to our equation and get the respective y values. These would give us the uh, additional xy coordinates points for these right here, okay, so that any points here, we can uh, get as many as we like, and then we could just basically uh, play connect the dots, if you will, to make your graph even that more spectacular, okay? But your teacher is basically gonna be looking for a general, uh, you know, good sketch. So when you draw your parabolas, make sure you, you know, you're showing them that you're not drawing crazy parabolas like that, that are not symmetric. You know, really show your teacher that, hey, you know, uh, you understand the concepts here, but uh, is this a you know decent amount of work? Yes, it is a good amount of work. And again, uh, this could have been even more interesting if we had a parabola that went through the x-axis like this, because if your teacher, well, say, said, hey, what are these points right there? Okay, that means you would have to actually solve that quadratic equation to get these points, and then you'd have to do all the additional work that we did for that. So yes, these problems do take time, and, but uh, you definitely need to know how to do this stuff if you're taking any sort of algebra course, okay? So uh, again, the way I like to teach math is I like to break things down in super easy, bite-sized steps, but it is a lot, okay? So don't feel, you know, over... Uh, uh, overwhelmed and sense that, oh, I can't do this, this is too much. No, just take it one step at a time. Learn the basic concepts behind uh, the, the graph of parabolas and how they relate to quadratic equations. Master how to find that vertex and then, you know, get that y-intercept and then just kind of start putting, you know, these graphs together, you know, um, one problem at a time. If that problem takes you 15 minutes, that's perfectly fine. Some of these algebra problems will take you a considerable amount of time, but hopefully this video will accelerate that. Now, I do want to uh, uh, state that just because you watch this video and you're like, oh, I understand that, unless you actually do these problems on your own, you're truly not going to retain this information. So make sure you follow through and practice. A uh, couple uh, suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on graphing uh, parabolas, quadratic equations, so you can check that out for follow-up or check out any one of my algebra courses again, uh, or you can check out some of my uh, notes as well. All that information you can find in the description of this video. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.